In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Welcome back. And Chaplain's Report today really comes in a lot of ways from the mindset that I was in when I was putting this show together. Because we saw from the very beginning, whether it was Elizabeth Warren and Doug Jones uh, moving on a little bit further, whether it was Trump and the people that are going to excuse his bad behavior regardless of what stupid thing that he does next, or when it comes to Chris Cuomo, who is fine covering a killer's ideology when it's somebody that he thinks is going to help his narrative, but ignores it and actually says that we shouldn't consider it at all when it's something that actually might hurt his narrative. I'm just so sick of the double standards on both sides. It absolutely drives me up a wall. And maybe it's because I was raised to think that consistency matters, that giving people a fair shake regardless of, of where they're coming from or whether you like them or not matters. But I think a lot of it does have to do with my Christian worldview, and that, that really comes down to there's no better place to see that than in the book of James. So in James 2... 4 through 9, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil motives? Listen, my beloved brethren, did not God choose the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Is it not the rich who oppress you and personally drag you into court? Do they not blaspheme the fair name by which you have been called. If, however, you are fulfilling the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Important thing to understand in really grasping what's going on in that passage is that they were giving respect to certain people based on how much they liked them or what they could do for them. The early church had a real problem with this. They were seeing members that were particularly affluent, very wealthy, and they were thinking, these guys are kind of pillars of the community, they make us look really good, and we really need them, and so we're going to kind of put them in a place of prestige, we're going to hold them up. That's not something that you do in God's kingdom. Because the whole purpose of Christianity is that everybody stands equal before God. That nobody, regardless of who they are, is worthy to come into God's presence. And so that we all empty ourselves and put on the mantle of Christ through coming in contact with his blood and being forgiven of our sins. And that God looks on him and not us, and that's the only way that we can be found worthy. It doesn't matter who we are. Doesn't matter if we're somebody that grew up in the church the, our entire life and led what most people would consider a Christian life for the entirety, all the way through childhood, gone to church our whole life, or we were somebody that was a, I mean, just a low life in prison. When you put on that mantle of Christ, it doesn't matter. And that's what's important about Christianity is that we understand that. But here were people in the Lord's church that were seeing certain people that they thought were a better face for the church, that gave them prominent positions, that put them in the place of honor, and they were ignoring the poor people because, well, they couldn't do as much for them, they felt. You see, that's an attitude that cannot exist among God's people. It just can't. And that's the reason that James is pointing this out. He's saying, look, You've got the entire message of the gospel backwards if that's what you're worried about. You're not taking into consideration what your actions are actually doing. And I've always heard, and it's a really good saying, it's not biblical, but it is a good saying, that if you really want to understand a person's character, watch how they treat a person that can't do anything for them. In other words, what is at the core of that idea is that when a person, how do they react 
when they know they're not getting anything in return, do they still choose to do good even though they know that there's no reward coming for them? Because if that is the case, then that's a person of real character. That's the kind of person that God wants to bless because they are doing his will. And that's something that unfortunately the, the Christians and James had lost. Now I want you to understand something about that passage too. You'll notice that James' answer to this is not, well, now you not got to be mean to the rich guy. It's not what he said at all. He said you're supposed to be treating people equally. So he's not saying the way to treat them equally is to now hold up the poor person and then talk about how terrible the rich person is and how bad that person is and repudiate them. Not what James said. He said, these are your brothers in Christ. You need to treat them equally. You don't need to be a respecter of persons and be guilty of the sin of partiality, which he regards in that passage as a sin. Holding out favorites. If there is anything that is true, especially of the Old Testament, picking favorites doesn't work for anybody. It doesn't work for humans. And when it comes to God, he does not tolerate it in his children. For the same reason that a parent can't stand it when his child is nasty or mean or doesn't show the adequate respect to one of his siblings that he's supposed to, because that's their children. God hates to see us fight as well, and he especially hates it when we treat his children in a way that we wouldn't want to be treated. That's really what's at the core of this whole thing. We have to treat each other as equals. We have to treat each other as if we're all valuable. Because isn't that what the teaching of Christ was all about? If you look at, for example, Matthew 25, what is the mark of a Christian person? What distinguishes a person that is saved from a person that is lost? Several things, but what's emphasized in that passage, the thing that Jesus brings up as the most important thing is how they treated other people. If you treated your brothers and sisters like you would have treated me, that's a person that belongs in the church. That's a lamb of God. That's someone that belongs in the kingdom that is ruled by Jesus Christ. Stay the course, friends. Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet totally made up.